Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, Hurricane Track here Wednesday now, the 18th of September 2024. Hope you're doing well this afternoon. we got to talk about, is this the potential next storm for us coming out of this very complex Central American gyre CAG event that's going to be setting up over the next several days? That'll be the main topic of today's update. Plus, wait until I show you the evolution of our soon-to-be La Nina I took a look at the subsurface uh, analysis, and it is quite interesting to say the least. All right, good to have you join me. Let's get started. First, National Hurricane Center homepage. Remnants of Gordon over here might try to redevelop at some point. Doesn't matter too much if it does. It'll only add a point or two to the A score probably, and that's assuming it redevelops at all. Meanwhile, we do have this area over here. This has popped up since we last talked. Uh, part of that Central American gyre that looks like it's going to set up in the Western Caribbean, a very common occurrence this time of year. So let's look at it on satellite imagery this afternoon. Let's use yellow here to highlight everything. You can clearly see just from the clouds, let's use a thicker stroke line there, that'll be better, just from the clouds streaking through pretty much east to west flow, no bending or turning over here, but... That is eventually going to change. It does look like the computer models are suggesting so. So we'll find out. So what happens is you get this gyre that sets up where the wind direction changes and just get this large circulation area. And then within that, let's use red here. You get these little pieces of vorticity that can kind of rotate around. It's hard to predict them. You never know which one might latch on and try to consolidate somewhere over the warm waters of either the Western Caribbean or maybe even the extreme southeast Pacific over here, and the ones that develop here, they can get caught in the trades and head on off to the east pack. The ones over here can pivot around, depending on troughing or ridging. They can either come up and turn or go west or all kinds of scenarios. So that's the setup. We are waiting for that Central American gyre phenomenon to set up over here. Currently, it's not there. That's something that's going to be evolving over the next few days. Now look, we can see that very easily here in the modeling. This is the GFS operational from today's 12Z run. There are those wind barbs pretty much straight east to west across the Caribbean. But let's jump this out to 72 hours. Now look what's going on. A little bit of a different look now. More of that turning in there. You can clearly see the way these wind barbs are going. The beginnings of the CAG, Central American Gyre, starting to set up. Furthermore, you can see these pieces of energy that are in here, areas of vorticity. Just got to wait and see which one of those, if any, tries to develop and, I, and, like I said, latch on and sort of take root over the very warm water that resides here in the Western Caribbean. That's going to be a pretty fascinating process to watch. If we jump this out to day four, the CAG is even more pronounced at this point. You also have pretty good ridging sitting over here over the southeast United States. Look at those height lines, like a, a mountaintop or whatever in the atmosphere. And that big ridge sitting over the southeast means it'll be hot and humid, and that'll block anything from down here stretching out and getting elongated, kind of sitting it down there and letting it percolate for a few days. That's a big key to this as well. Finally out by day five, and then day six, and then day seven, we do see something trying to organize here, very large spread out system. But this tells me there's a lot of energy down here and the model is trying to figure out how to bundle it. The details will be worked out later. Again, this is a week out. This is next Wednesday, the 25th. So we just have to watch and see how everything plays out. It's gonna be kind of a complex slow motion event. This is what the Canadian model shows, a very similar scenario going out to a week's time. And by the way, I have to comment, that is remarkable agreement between the GFS operational and the Canadian operational for the exact same time period. The Euro, as we're going to look at in just a moment, that's still catching up, or maybe the Euro has the right idea, hard to say. But it is interesting that at least two of these models, the global models, are showing almost identical evolutions with our system down there coming out of the Western Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico. Speaking of the Euro, this also goes out to one week. Let's see how this evolves. A very similar evolution by day six and day seven, except it's more focused on 
the southwest Gulf of Mexico, so the difference certainly is several hundred miles, but unanimously all the major global models are showing this large area of energy down here, this CAG event, and then we just have to see which area of energy, again that term, takes root and tries to develop into something, if at all. And that brings me to this post here from Andrew. Andrew is one of our patrons over on our Patreon. And by the way, if you want to get involved with our Patreon, that's where we met Andrew, over on our Discord. Our patrons do have access to the Discord channel that we have set up. We interact with each other, we share ideas, we crowdsource new and innovative projects, you name it. And we get to meet awesome people like Andrew, I believe from Tulsa, Oklahoma, if I'm not mistaken. And I like these graphics, I like the, the way Andrew presents this, because then I can show it to you in an easy to understand manner. So what Andrew say? Well, the latest updates continue to show a split in the potential area and the outcomes for the Caribbean signal, with ensemble models pointing to several scenarios. It's very important to note this will likely persist until we can get a handle on where a disturbance consolidates, if at all. It's not a guarantee. And then how the troughing off the East Coast gets resolved. Because more troughing off the East Coast, that's kind of an exaggeration, but it would pull the system north faster. Might not even let it consolidate. It's more elongated if that happens. If you have ridging that's longer lasting, you get more of that festering down here that I talked about. But yeah, the ensembles definitely spread all over the place because nothing's even there yet. We're just waiting for this. And I will make one more comment on the models. Maybe it's a little bit of um, kind of an impediment, if you will, uh, that we all do have access like we do to all the models all the time because we can see everything happening in slow motion and maybe we shouldn't, you know what I mean? Because it, it leads to people not understanding what they're looking at. They may inadvertently share a landfall image 10 days out or whatever, and it makes people nervous, you know, needlessly. When we know CAG looks like it's coming, beyond that, let's just wait and see, because it really is going to be a long and drawn out process, especially since we can look at these models every six hours that they update. It starts to become probably a little bit problematic that we have that access. Just thought I'd throw that little bit of commentary in there. Another thing, though, to keep in mind, and this is important, just keeping things real, yet yeah, we are seeing the La Nina coming on there much stronger now than it has been, a little later by a few weeks probably than we were anticipating a few months ago, but there it is, the uh, cooler equatorial Pacific, coupled with the very warm water relative to average here, and notice that most of that warmest water is now all through this area. I'm going to try to draw my idea of a hatched area in here. It's all over here and not out here where that warm horseshoe used to be. So we're going to concentrate the energy, the upward motion, all that stuff more and more as we get through the end of September and into October. And that's where we live, right? And then, as I said, the La Nina, let's take a look. If we had a slice right through here in the vertical, what would that look like? Well, here's the answer. It would look like this. I was pretty surprised when I saw this. I haven't looked at this at all lately. That subsurface anomaly, definitely something else there. One, two, three, four, five, six levels down, if you will. The, uh, the gradient there, the temperature gradient, quite substantial. The subsurface really showing that La Nina coming on as we move through the latter half of September and into October and beyond. So we've got to pay attention to that as well. And then real quick, a close-up here. A couple of interesting things to note. Did you see my update yesterday? Those blues up here, they're gone. Now we've moderated the northern gulf, probably because we've got that good southerly flow coming up in here, pushing that very warm water back towards the shelf areas. And it's not anything substantial, but we're not cooling it off anymore, and that could matter. We'll have to wait and see. And I want to remind you, it's not all about, oh, are we going to get a hurricane? We have to stop focusing on whether or not something's going to be a hurricane and then how strong that hurricane will be. That cannot be the primary focus. It can be a focus. It makes sense. But something like a very warm gulf and a, quote, weak hurricane can still bring 20, 30 inches of rain somewhere if the setup is proper. We just saw something similar, of course, with potential tropical cyclone 8 right here in my backyard 
of Southeast North Carolina. That thing didn't even have a name, technically, you know what I mean? It wasn't Helene or whatever. By the way, this, this, this next one, if it does form, it would get the H name, Helene. But the water temperatures have cooled off off of my coast, down off the low country area, and even northeast Florida, so they are running below average there, just to point that out. Finally, Gulf of Mexico, I showed you, showed you the anomalies. The actual water temperature is still quite warm, 30 degrees Celsius all through here, 31 Celsius southwest Florida. So yes, still very much hurricane season. It's only September 18th. We have a long way to go. You know, that line between being too alarming versus too complacent and just dismissing it, eh, it's not, at least from our point of view, we try not to make that line very thin. I try to make stuff pretty black and white. You got to pay attention. You got to be ready. And we have this gift of the, the models to help us at least know what's happening in the days ahead. Because, I mean, my goodness, we don't even have the Central American dryer set up just yet. That's still coming down the model road uh, several days. At least we can watch it unfold in real time and, you know, through this update and on social media. All right. Well, that's it for me for today. Have a good rest of your Wednesday from all of us at our great community here at Hurricane Track, our YouTube channel, our Twitter, and our Patreon. That's where we do most of our stuff. We appreciate you watching. I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.